First things first, shout out to JTR Raps for becoming a channel member. Appreciate that there. Hopefully you get the get your money's worth so you can, you know, go on out there and get certified and, you know, one of them certifications. So appreciate you uh, joining the channel membership and supporting the Tech G channel over here. Appreciate that. So last quiz, which was uh, a link I posted about a week or some change ago, it was for the A plus hardware quiz where we covered sections 1.7 and 2.1. Those two sections were talking about mobile device synchronization and TCP and UDP ports and protocols, right? All right so the first question from that quiz was a benefit of using Using cloud backup service is that data from a mobile device can be easily recovered if a mobile device is lost or stolen. So would this be true or false? So a benefit of using a cloud backup service is that data from a mobile device can be easily recovered if a mobile device is lost or stolen. And the correct answer to this would be true. So that's the whole point or one of the points of using cloud. Instead of you storing your information, your pictures, your music, your videos and other files locally onto that device, you send them off to the cloud. So in the event somebody steals your phone or you lose it and you go get another device, you can pull that information down from the cloud onto your new device. What types of data can the Chrome browser synchronize between mobile devices? Would this be bookmarks and passwords, bookmarks and files, music and videos, or files and passwords? So what type of data can the Chrome browser synchronize between mobile devices? So you want to sync, you know, basically between your laptop and your phone and your laptop and your tablet, so on and so forth. This would be bookmarks and passwords because remember the Chrome is just a browser. That, that's all it is. Just a, a little window to let you explore the internet. So it's not going to be saving music and music videos and pictures and, and all sort of stuff, but it will save your bookmarks and your passwords that are associated with web pages you may have saved or passwords that you may have typed to gain access to certain websites. It'll synchronize that stuff. All right, which of the following are examples of universal connection types that enable mobile device synchronization? Would it be IEEE 802.11, USB-C, cellular, Bluetooth, or all of the above. So which of the following are examples of universal connection types that enable mobile device synchronization? And the correct answer to this would be all of these will allow for you to engage in mobile device synchronization. So 802.11, that is just basically the fancy schmancy way of saying Wi-Fi. That's all that is. USB-C, that is basically, there's a USB-C connector right here. Or as a matter of fact, if you go watch, for those of you who are signed up for my lessons membership, you go watch the latest video that I just uploaded. I actually talk about USB-C up in that video. You can synchronize by way of cellular connections and you can synchronize by way of Bluetooth connections as well. So all of these will allow for you to engage in mobile device synchronization. A network protocol providing an alternative solution to the manual allocation of IP addresses is known as what? Is this DNS, SNMP, NAT, or DHCP? So a network protocol providing an alternative solution to the manual allocation of IP addresses. So what this question is asking you is when it says manual allocation of IP addresses, basically this is saying you going around to every computer or device and manually inputting the IP address, the default gateway, the subnet mask, the DNS or whatever, whatever information that you need to input into this computer or this device. So instead of you manually doing that, which one of these devices will allow for this to automatically do it on its own is what this is saying. And the correct answer to this is going to be called the DHCP or the dynamic host configuration protocol. So basically, Basically, this is a device. It's built into your Soho router. If those of y'all who got a, wire, a wireless router at your house, it can also be a standalone device of sorts, right? But basically, this is what assigns IP addresses to devices. So you don't have to manually go in there and do it because if you're working in an organization and they got like 100, 200 computers, if you don't have DHCP set up and you want all your devices to get connectivity, whether it's a printer or computer or whatever the case may be, you're going to have to go around to each and every device, log into it and manually input the information. And then, you know, that could take you forever in a day, but it's much easier just to have the DHCP kick out all these uh, IP addresses for you. A type of cryptographic network protocol for secure data data communication, remote command line login, remote command execution, and other secure network services between two network computers is known as what? Would this be TFTP, SSH, Telnet, or RDP? So a type of cryptographic network protocol for secure data
bit of communication. All right. So basically these two things can communicate encrypted where nobody can see what the what's being said. It provides remote login, remote command login, meaning you can remotely log into another device. And then it provides remote command execution, meaning after you log in, you can input commands and this thing will execute whatever it is that you're trying to do. What is this called at the end of the day? So basically this is what is called secure shell. That's all it is. It allows for you to remotely log into another device and act as if you are directly connected to that device as, as if that device was in the same vicinity as you and you were directly plugged into it, except in this case, you're doing it remotely. And as you're doing it remotely, the communication line that you establish between your endpoint and that device or that server, or whatever, by way of SSH, all your ones and zeros are being encrypted is all this is saying at the end of the day. What is the name of a network protocol that secures web traffic via SSL TLS encryption? Would this be SFTP, HTTPS, FTPS, or SNMP? Once again, this is how these tests are going to be. They're going to be loaded with acronyms, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, what is the name of a network protocol that secures uh, web traffic via secure sockets layer? That's what SSL stands for. And then transport layer security. That's what TLS stands for. All right, correct answer to this is going to be HTTPS or hypertext transfer protocol secure. So basically you got two forms of how you surf the internet when you look at a web page. You got HTTP, HTTPS. HTTP was the standard when the internet first started coming out back in like the, uh, when everybody started getting access to the internet back in like the 90s, HTTPS came about due to uh, e-commerce when people wanted to pay for things over the internet, but they were terrified of putting their credit card information because they were scared somebody would jack their information. So a lot of e-commerce websites came out with HTTPS to secure that information. But then over time, pretty much all websites adopted HTTPS for you to securely communicate with that website. So when you log into Amazon, you log into YouTube, you log in, a, I don't know, whatever, and you input your username and password, it should be secured. And the way you can check it, just go where, where the website name is at, amazon.com, just look at it. You should see like a little lock icon right there. If you see that lock icon, that means that you're communicating with this website by way of HTTPS, Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure, so that your stuff is being encrypted using uh, TLS, Transport Layer Security, which is basically the predecessor, not the predecessor, it's the thing that came after SSL.